Chapter 1. Introduction. Criminal law is essentially the study of crimes. To understand criminal law, it is important to distinguish it from civil law. In a criminal case, the government prosecutes a person who is accused of violating a crime. The government becomes the plaintiff, and the accused becomes the defendant. If the defendant is convicted, he may be incarcerated and fined. In contrast, civil law involves individuals or entities suing each other to resolve legal disputes. In a civil case, if the defendant is found liable, he will usually have to pay money damages, but he cannot be incarcerated. Another difference between criminal law and civil law is burden of proof. The burden of proof is the level of proof the party bringing the case must attain in order to prevail. In criminal proceedings, the standard for the burden of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. This means that the prosecution must prove every element of the crime beyond a reasonable doubt in order to get a conviction. However, in civil cases, the party bringing the action generally must prove the case by a preponderance of the evidence, which is a lower burden of proof than that required in criminal cases. Note that this outline covers criminal law, but not criminal procedure. Criminal law is the study of the crimes themselves, while criminal procedure concerns the process through which the criminal laws are enforced, such as criminal investigations, trials, and sentencing. Let's move on. The purpose of criminal law is to help regulate social conduct and to prevent behavior that threatens the health, safety, and welfare of citizens. There are several reasons why society chooses to punish an offender. Let's discuss the general theories that justify criminal punishment. First of all, punishment acts as retribution. Retribution means that a criminal is punished because they have done some wrong. When a person commits a crime and violates another person's rights, that person should be punished and suffer in a way that is proportionate to the crime they committed. This is punishment in the form of retribution. Second, punishment is also justified because it acts as a deterrent. Punishing an offender discourages the offender from future criminal behavior. Additionally, other individuals will be discouraged from committing an offense when they see that others have been punished for committing that same offense. Third, incarceration is also a theory of punishment, which is designed to remove criminals from society so that they cannot cause harm to the public. Fourth, Punishment may be in the form of rehabilitation. Rehabilitation aims at transforming an offender by means of therapy or education to have a useful life. Rather than punishing a criminal, rehabilitation essentially seeks to bring a criminal into a more peaceful state of mind and to be a valuable member of society. Lastly, punishment can be in the form of restoration. Restoration is a victim-oriented theory of punishment that aims to repair any injury inflicted upon the victim or the victim's family. This usually involves the offender apologizing, returning stolen money, or doing community service. Let's move on. Note that crimes can be classified into two categories, felonies and misdemeanors. A felony is a more serious offense and is usually punishable by imprisonment for more than one year, and in some jurisdictions, by death. Crimes typically classified as felonies are burglary, arson, robbery, rape, and murder. On the other hand, misdemeanors are less serious crimes that are punishable by fine only or imprisonment for less than one year. All crimes that are not considered felonies are considered misdemeanors like traffic violations, petty theft, disorderly conduct, and trespass. Let's move on and discuss where criminal law comes from. Criminal law can be found in statutes and common law. The common law is a body of rules that has been developed through the courts over time. In other words, 
common law is judge-made law. Historically, the source of criminal law came from the common law. However, with the advent of legislatures and other lawmaking entities, the task of creating and defining criminal law has largely been transferred from the courts to the legislature. Today, criminal laws in the United States are established for the most part by local, state, and federal legislatures. Note that many jurisdictions have strayed away from the common law and have instead adopted portions of the Model Penal Code in enacting criminal statutes. The Model Penal Code was developed by the American Law Institute in the 1960s in order to update and standardize criminal laws throughout the United States. Although the Model Penal Code and the common law both serve as a basis for criminal laws, crimes and their definitions vary significantly among jurisdictions. In this outline, we will focus on the common law definitions of crimes, and from time to time we will look at modern trends. Although each crime can be broken down into its various elements, generally every crime consists of two fundamental elements, a physical act and a mental state. The physical act element is known as the actus reus, and the mental state of mind element is known as the mens rea. In the next chapter, we will begin discussing the elements of crimes, starting with the actus reus.